Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Supply Chain. This learning module will introduce you to some of the common approaches for creating an entrepreneurial supply chain. As a quick review, based on the customer demand signal, a supply chain consists of the flow of supply, which are materials, products, and services, connected by transportation, storage, and delivery activities, integrated through planning, information, and enabling technologies. Supply chains are naturally positioned to be entrepreneurial opportunities touching both supply and demand. These opportunities can transform the market by strengthening relationships with customers and suppliers, increasing competition through globalization and new strategic partnerships, capturing the market by implementing seamless and efficient supply and information flows, creating barriers for new competition. In an interview with PH International's CEO, Liam Casey, he compared asking details about a company's supply chain is like asking Coca-Cola about their secret recipe. The traditional view of supply chains are typically focused on key performance indicators, such as cost, quality, and delivery. However, there are much more competitive advantages to be gained within the supply chain. Supply chains become an opportunity to creatively develop new ideas, processes, services, and products, generating new value for the company and its customers. Entrepreneurial supply chains focus on innovation, how the supply chain functions in response to customers' need, in addition to cost, quality, and delivery. So how do you identify these entrepreneurial opportunities within the supply chain? One approach is by implementing lean techniques. Lean is a set of management practices developed shortly after World War II by Toyota. The objective is to achieve a high level of quality production using minimum resources through the elimination of waste. Waste is anything taking up resource, time, cost, or materials. It is an activity or process that does not add customer value. Lean also promotes what's known as a pull system where the flow of material and information is pulled rather than pushed through the process. The goal is to maximize customer value while minimizing waste. It is important to understand how demand is generated and how the supply chain responds to the demand. Is it based on a push or pull system? In a push system, work is based on downstream demand forecasts. One would want to keep inventory on hand to meet actual demand. It's a more proactive approach where one anticipates customer demand. In a pool system, work is based on actual demand of downstream customers. Inventory is created when needed, a more reactive approach where one responds to actual customer demand. Supply chains can be a combination of these, both push and pull processes. A push system is typically implemented when the demand variability is low, product customization is at a minimal, and manufacturing variability, set of costs are low, and lead times are short. A pull system is just the opposite. High demand variability, high degree of customization, manufacturing variability, set of costs are high, and lead times may be longer. Can you think of an example product for each of these systems? Holding high levels of inventory can mask problems in a supply chain. A common inventory practice or principle, referred to as just-in-time inventory, helps eliminate the high cost of sitting inventory. The goal is to only produce what is needed, which is a pool system, driven by actual demand relying on customer orders, prevents over- and under-production, which benefits the reduction of inventory, helps minimize response time, promotes quality and discipline within the supply chain, and reduces waste and cost. The objective is to smooth the flow of material to arrive when it is needed. Lean identifies seven types of waste. Transportation, the unnecessary movement of anything, anything being people, information, or material. An example is looking around for a needed part in a warehouse. Inventory, any raw material or finished good being stored. There are three types of inventory in lean. There's raw material, work in progress or WIP, and finished goods. 
The concern is with the space and lead times of the inventory. We want to keep it moving so we can shorten the cache cycle. Motion. Unnecessary worker or machine movement. So these are subtle movements which can then add up. Waiting. Workers or materials that are waiting to be completed. An example could be when a machine fails. Overprocessing. Processing beyond what is required. For example, spending time to develop a product feature that the customer may never use. Overproduction. Producing larger quantities than required. Making more of something than needed by the next process or making it too early. And defects. Customers believing they did not get what they requested. Having to do rework, fixes, or recalls only adds cost and time. So waste is any element in the process that does not add value to the customer. The following are some benefits of implementing lean techniques. Create an action-oriented organization. Makes problems visible and solves issues in real time. Promotes continuous improvement. Connects directly back to the customer value proposition. Embraces standardization and quality. Promotes a highly collaborative environment. Eliminates non-value-added tasks meaning we want to only perform tasks or functions that add value to the customer. Value is what the customer is ultimately buying and relates to quality, service, and price. Think long-term and keep short-term goals in focus. Kaizen is a key principle in Lean that promotes rapid and iterative improvement. What it translates to is good change, or referred to as continuous improvement. Kaizen is a short, intensive improvement project or event, typically lasting 60 to 90 days. In order to identify Kaizens, we need to better understand the supply chain, or what's often referred to as the value stream. A traditional description of a value stream as it relates to a supply chain is the process flow of material and information from the point of order to the point of completion of all activities after the product or service has been delivered. In other words, all steps, functions, and processes which go into providing a product or service to the customer, from supplier to customer, from order to delivery. As it relates to entrepreneurship, a value stream can also describe all the steps from bringing a product from concept to launch through sustainment and support. Now the best way to document the value stream is to draw a visual representation of every process in the supply and information flows. This technique is simply called value stream mapping or VSM. Value stream mapping is a process mapping technique that enables stakeholders to visualize the flow within an end-to-end -end value stream. A pictorial snapshot like the one shown here for example, basically a block process diagram but at a higher level, showing the material and information flow. You walk through the sequence of steps from start to finish, mapping all the way back to the customer. The objective is to break down the value from the standpoint of the customer from beginning to end and highlight the non-value added wastes, address disconnects, redundancies, and gaps. This technique is often called the language of lean. VSM is a hands-on exercise to help uncover the seven deadly wastes. Let's take a look again at our simple VSM example. We can see the information flow from right to left, from the customer through to the supplier. The material flow is then the opposite direction, left to right. The timeline below shows the value added times, which are the in process times. The non value added times, or the wait times, are those upper values. In this example, the non value added time is four days compared to the value add time, which is only a half a day. So hopefully with this simple VSM example, you can quickly identify the possible areas for improvement. Here are some common VSM icons. We have the customer supplier, dedicated process icon, shared process, a data box to capture any key metrics, inventory, this is inventory stored between processes, material push, pushing material or supply to the next process, Material pull, pulling material or supply based on downstream demand. Inventory buffer, 
or safety stock, which helps protect against sudden demand fluctuations. Manual information flow, electronic information flow, a Kaizen burst. This icon allows you to highlight a potential area of improvement. An external shipment, so any transport mode. There are two types of value stream maps, current and future. The current state map is the baseline view of the existing value stream from which all other improvements will be measured. This is the reality, or the as-is state of the process. The future state map represents the vision of the value stream after improvements have been made. In other words, the goal. Basically, how the value stream can be optimized to eliminate the greatest amount of waste, promoting the highest possible value to the customer. So what are the benefits of a VSM exercise? It provides a common language for all stakeholders. It helps visualize the entire material and information flows for everyone documents all activities required to deliver a product or service, helps the business understand how it actually works, allows you to see the big picture, not just individual processes, identifies sources of waste, helps identify weaknesses and problem areas, promotes continuous improvement efforts, and forms the basis of an implementation plan. So the basic process of a VSM exercise is you want to start with the five basic operational functions from SCORE. Plan, source, make, deliver, return. Map all the processes that support end-to-end -end value stream. Observe and gather process data at each step along the way. Data such as availability, schedules, processing and lead times, demand requirements, and inventory, raw, whip, and finished. Ask the five W's and H. What are the main tasks in the process? Where and when does the process take place? Why does the process even happen? Who is involved in the process? And how long does the process take? Map all the material and information flows. Then identify areas for improvement, or the Kaizen bursts. Steps to an entrepreneurial supply chain. Set a strategic direction. This is the future state BSM. Establish objectives to deliver improvements Identify the initiatives to meet the objectives, or Kaizans. Create metrics to track progress towards the objectives. Then identify and align resources to properly execute the initiatives. In conclusion, entrepreneurial supply chains improve profitability, maximize customer satisfaction, achieve a high level of value add over the competition, reduce non-value add activities, eliminate wastes, Create a win-win environment for all stakeholders in the supply chain. What is your vision to transform your supply chain into a competitive advantage? This video module was brought to you by Villanova University's Engineering Entrepreneurship Program and made possible by the support of the Robert and Patricia Kern Family Foundation through Keen the Kern Entrepreneurship Education Network, instilling the entrepreneurial mindset in engineering undergraduates.